for this session of Meta and Meta Knowledge Sharing Session. Saturday, I hope your our regular participants Saturday start with this knowledge breakfast. So we have it after breakfast and before lunch. So that people has in between breakfast and lunch on Saturday, a knowledge breakfast as well. So as you know, we are now running the series, webinar series on LLP topic. And uh, we have covered various topics under this series. And today's topic, last Saturday, we discussed on the tax aspect, though I was not there. I know that. And uh, today we are taking uh, as a question of LSP and foreign direct investment. So we are covering LSP and FDI. Uh, uh, LLP and FDI. So we are covering conversion of LLP and FDI in today's topic. We always has a confusion that which entity can be converted, whether the again reconversion is possible, if conversion is done, whether FDI is allowed. This kind of question is always there. The tax impact uh, is already covered in last uh, webinar. So I will request participants that it can be and Salini will clarify. So uh, welcome friends. Uh, I'll, I'll just say that Mr. Hitendra Mehta, who was earlier the speaker, is uh, shown his inability. He has some emergency uh, requirement where he is required to be present. And he apologized to everyone. So we have with us, but not other, Ms. Renuka, uh, Renuka Tuljapurka. Thanks, Ms. Renuka, for, uh, you know, short notice and giving us your valuable time. Uh, with us, our Bala is there. Uh, Ms. Uh, Renuka Tuljapurka with us. And as I mentioned today, our panelist is my, uh, Mr. Pala. Mr. Sudhakar is also sorry, by he has also emergency today, first time emergency, so he's not there today. Uh, but our own Mr. Bala is there. And uh, so uh, welcome to our panelist, Ms. Renuka Tuljapurkar, who is a whole time company secretary with bachelor's degree in economics from Vanita Mahavidyalaya, Hyderabad. She is also a lawyer. She has nearly 24 years of post qualification work experience in the field of corporate affairs, family, labor law, operations, management, always. She worked in different industries ranging from infrastructure, power, manufacturing, trading company service sector currently working as general manager. She is company secretary and legal for Trichy Tollways Private Limited. The company is owned and managed by Abertis Group Spain. She is also designated partner of Abertis India Toll Road Service LLP. She has a handle assignment related to reduction of share capital right issue, CCBS conversion, issuance of SCD, uh, approval from Nahai, license with legal counsel, FEMA, trademark, due diligence, and various other things. Uh, she has a wide exposure in the different area. Welcome, Ms. Renuka. Thanks for your time. Again, thanks for, and we are sure that your experience will be useful to our participants. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, so now, of course, this is our own Mr. Bala is there. Welcome, Mr. Bala. As usual, he's always there. And you know everyone, including Mr. Bala, with decades of experience and a lot of articles. Sudhakar is not there. Sorry, friends. But uh, he he was there till more 20. So we thank all our panelists for today's webinar for joining us on our knowledge sharing journey on behalf of the entire team of Meta and Meta. I'll request... Uh, Ms. Renoka to say a few words and uh, I will uh, on the topic and then I will request Mr. Mala to say a few words and then Ms. Salini can start. The today's presentation is done by Ms. Salini, 
who is our bangalore partner and she is giving thank you salini so over to over to miss renika please yeah good morning all thank you mehta and mehta firm for giving this opportunity to be a panelist of for today's uh, session uh, today's topic is very relevant uh, as we are talking about llp and llp is one of the structure which talks about the less uh, compliance regime when compared to the other corporate forms so with the advent of llp in 2008 onwards llp structure has gained its prominence and more and more sectors are venturing into llp so as i said it has its own uh, advantage and obviously the our presenter uh, she will be presenting more on this apart from the topic which has been there so looking forward to hear more from this thank you once again mehta and mehta for giving me the opportunity to be the panelist on ियन LLP. So when we talk about the conversion, as you are all aware, the company setup is something different. LLP setup is something different because companies are governed by the shareholders, and there is always a shareholders meeting for various approvals, etc., and other things and all which are actually being done, and it is run by the people who are elected by the shareholders. That is the board of directors. It is actually a public company, so to say. Except uh, uh, family and private companies, but when it comes to the LLB, it is actually closed in it between the partners, and within the partners, they are not to elect a designated partner who will be responsible for the business, and they will be running the business. And again, in case of the companies, the documents, barring the private company, subject to certain restrictions, etc., the documents like. Uh, MOA, AOA, and other things are all available for the public view. It is a public document. Whereas in LLB is concerned, the LLB agreement per se, which is equivalent to the MOA and AOA of a company, is actually not a public document. It is not available to the public because it is a contractual obligation between the partners. It is available only to the regulators' purposes. So this is basically a difference. So, in which case, what happens is when you are actually talking about the conversion. Suppose that the largely held unlisted public companies having larger number of shareholders, when they get converted to LLB, theoretically, yes, it is possible. Practically, there will be difficulty because ultimately, you know, all the shareholders have to become a partners of the company. What is the number of partners? How we are going to manage, etc. And again, getting the special approval for the conversion. In the annual general meeting, etc., and all those things is a question mark which is actually there when it comes to the practical. And again, the question will arise: Can we actually convert any form of the companies into the LLP? Now, when you come to the banking company, banking companies are governed by the RBI regulations, and it is actually incorporated under the Banking Regulation Act of 1949. So, question arises whether banking company can be converted, insurance company can be converted, whether manufacturing company can be converted. All those questions are will arise in the mind of the people. There are answers. Shalini is going to provide on all these things. I am not going to talk on this thing since the presentation is already covering all these things. But these are all some of the issues. And again, whether LLP is actually a hybrid form of. Combining the partnership and also the qualities of the companies, whether foreign direct investment is permitted, if that is the case, what extent it is permitted, what are the things? These are all another process. Because when it comes to the foreign direct investment, there are certain investment which are actually based on the performance linked things which are actually there. Whether those things what will happen, whether that can be converted, that cannot be converted, is also a big question mark. And again, people will also ask. Okay, why do we convert actually? 
from LLB to company or company to LLB, why do you convert? To some extent, we can say LLB conversion to the public, okay, to have a better public view, go into the public, raise the capital gains, all those things, we can talk about it. But vice versa, if you convert, what happens? What are the advantages? Why people do it? All those things. And again, under the company side, any business which is run for the profit, which is legally permitted, can actually form an LLP. So the question comes into the mind, can a LLB perform or LLB can be formed for conducting a non-banking financial operations? Again, question is, the non-banking financial, when you are talked about, it is subject to RBA regulations. So you are not only required to comply with the company side, but also you are required to comply with the RBI regulation because RBI has to give the license for that. RBI is strictly prohibited. LLB cannot be formed for carrying out the non-banking financial activities. So these are all the various things which are actually there. Nitty-gritties are there when we talk about the conversion. Similarly, when we talk about the FDI, all those things are all there. One thing is very clear. After the LLB Act has been introduced, there has been considerable amount of LLB are getting formed and even conversions are also taking place because people find it, it is easier to conduct the LLB business because of the less compliances, number one. It is easy to run, number two. And again, it actually has the, you know, hybrid uh, combination of having a privatized partnership agreement and as well as retaining the qualities of the company, these are all there. I think in the days to come, LLB is going to take off in a very big way. As you are all aware, all the big fours, they are actually a LLB firms only who are conducting the audit. And not only that, there are a lot of Indian auditing firm also, LLB firms only. And again, LLB also permits the various combination of the professional. That means chartered accountant, company secretaries, cost accountants, even the advocates, they all can join together. They can also form a LLB. This is another great advantage. Many professionals can come under one roof and they can provide the various services. This is also actually possible. So let us uh, see the presentation what Shalini is actually going to present to us. Then uh, as usual, I'll request to all of you to put your queries on the chat box. We will be taking up the queries periodically. We will answer. If there are anything anybody wants to talk in, if the clarification is required, etc., you can raise a hand and uh, definitely we will give you the mic access and we can talk it out also. And uh, coming to our panelist, Renuka, she has got a practical experience of handling the LLP. In fact, she has done a lot of things in this field. And in fact, uh, we know what is the law, we know what are the provisions, etc. But the thing is, when it's come to the practical situations, definitely once experience, definitely, definitely add to our knowledge. Oh, under these circumstances, what happened? Oh, these circumstances also exist, etc. I am very sure she is actually going to share the practical experience at the appropriate time and the presentation is there, and we will have the great benefit profile. With this, I pass on the mic to the Shalini. I ask you, Shalini, to take us through the presentation. Over Thank to Shalini, you, please. Thank you, Balas. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Uh, can everyone see the uh, PPT? Yeah, very much. Okay. Just make it full screen, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so today's topic is conversion of uh, any kind of entity into LLP. Uh, and then we will also deliberate on foreign LLPs. So to start with, we will be starting with the uh, conversion of a partnership firm into LLP. Uh, this uh, enabling uh, the partnership firm can be converted into LLP in accordance with the provisions of Section 55 of the LLP Act and the provisions of Chapter 10 and Schedule 2 of the LLP Act. 
before going into uh, conversion, any kind of entity will have to ensure they don't have any overdue annual returns, be it with the registrar of firms when a firm is getting converted and if a private limited or a public limited company is getting converted, they have to ensure there are no annual returns pending with the registrar of companies as well as uh, the income tax department. So uh, next we are moving into application for conversion of LLP. Uh, the application for conversion, before filing an application for conversion, uh, the all the partners will have to consent. The partners of the registered partnership firm will have to give their consent for conversion into the LLP. And once you have the consent from all the partners, the uh, an application in form Philip should be filed to the uh, registrar of companies and LLPs uh, for conversion. Along with form Philip, uh, an additional form, which is form 17, needs to be filed, which gives the statement of uh, conversion of the firm into LLP. So what happens is the registrar will evaluate the document submitted by the uh, applicant. And then on receipt of all these documents, the registrar, if he is satisfied, he'll issue the uh, 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 re registration certificate upon conversion. And once the LLP has the uh, conversion certificate, which is your uh, uh, new incorporation certificate issued in the name of the LLP, the firm will have to file form 14 within 15 days of such conversion. There have been cases where the registrar can uh, reject the conversion if at all he is dissatisfied with the documents or the details which is provided by the applicant, which is the register, uh, which is the partnership firm. So, uh, if there is any such uh, a rejection of the applicant, which uh, uh, might not ha happen because we uh, any applicant is given two resubmission chances, they can submit their application twice. Okay, uh, if at all they are not able to resolve the queries of the uh, uh, registrar of, uh, raised in their remarks, then the application is subject to rejection by the uh, registrar. And in such cases, the applicant can file an appeal with the NCLT. Okay, uh, challenging this within 60 days of such rejection by the registrar. Moving on, next, what will happen to the partnership firm once the LLP is registered? Okay. Upon conversion of the partnership firm into LLP, the firm will cease to exist and it will be considered as the firm is dissolved. All the assets, liabilities, be it movable or immovable, shall now be transferred from the firm to the LLP and all the uh, rights will now vest with the LLP. Next, if at all there are any pending cases, be it uh, uh, pending cases, judgments, orders, or anything with the with any courts, tribunals, or any statutory bodies in favor or against the firm, uh, uh, will now uh, move to uh, the LLP, uh, and LLP will have to fight it as if it was initially filed by the LLP or for or against the LLP. And all the existing contracts, agreements with all your uh, vendors, other uh, uh, stakeholders will continue to exist. And uh, it will as if operate the agreement was executed with the LLP. All the uh, employee contracts or uh, consultants who are on contract, uh, these contracts will also get converted or move from the firm to the LLP. For all these contracts, be it with the vendors or the employment contracts, the, uh, the newly incorporated LLP can consider to uh, uh, enter into a new amendment uh, agreement or issue a new letter stating the uh, uh, ratification of all the uh, documents which were entered by the uh, firm will continue uh, to best with the LLP and they can take it forward. Moving on, next. So this is about the conversion of partnership firm into LLP. One practical when question. Talking about, when you are talking about the conversion. Yes, sir. Really speaking, if all the documents are in order, hmm. and we comply with everything, there is no reason for the ROC to reject the hmm. conversion actually. Correct, correct. As you rightly pointed out, if there are any investigation processes there, any litigation process or their disputed issues are there, then in which case all these litigation and disputes, etc., has to be settled first. And then you have to apply for the conversion. Because normally you also might have seen many of you or participants, 
when we go for the merger and amalgamation to the NCLT's approval, the NCLT sends a notice to the register of companies because if they seek their concurrence, basically, you know, no objection certificate from them seeking, you know, they don't have any objection in giving the merger application approvals. So in such a cases, ROC normally go through the details of the companies and they see if there are any show cost notices, ongoing issues are there, any litigations are there, then ROC will say, sorry, unless until these issues are sorted out, then and then only the concern can be given. That is the normal procedure. The same thing will also apply here. So in case of the company, if they have the ongoing issues, etc., suppose, for example, there's a show cost notice, litigation, everything is pending, then in case they have to file the compounding application. Once they file the compounding application, etc., then to that extent, yes, it is settled, then they will take it actually forward against the people who are against the compounding application has been filed. So these are all the things which are actually involved. So really speaking here, although she puts it in a very bullet point, there is a quite a good amount of homework is required to be done by the professional. First of all, what is the time frame? What is the document which have to be submitted? All the documents are all in order. And if there are any rectification, we have a time to rectify. All those things have to be meticulously done. It has to be taken. Here again, the professional like practicing company secretaries can be a great help. That is what I see here. Yeah. The more exact. Yeah. So, to add on, yeah, I'd just like to add on. Add on to this, uh, what Bala sir said, secure creditor also plays a vital role for getting the NOCs. Sometimes they uh, uh, do a spoil spot to the process. So taking their approvals for the conversion also plays a vital role. Because we have uh, seen uh, certain uh, uh, experiences in our uh, practical things where creators have played a spoil spot in certain other assignments. So concurrence of the creators are more important in this uh, any process of conversion or any amalgamation, how Bala sir was explaining. So this is what uh, I can just add on to the list of things what Bala sir said. Thank you. Thank you, Renuka. Yeah, said it. Yes, ma'am. So just to add on, sir, the more exhaustive your checklist is for conversion of a firm into LLP, that quickly you can get your uh, approval from the ROC. It all depends on your preliminary work and background, depending on the firm's operations. So moving on, uh, next. Can multiple partnership firms be converted into one LLP? So here, uh, the LLP Act does provide that uh, uh, two or more partnership firms can't be converted into one LLP. Each LLP, uh, each firm has its own unique identity and they have been running operations uh, as uh, separate entities. They might not be considered as a legal entity, but uh, three or four partnership firms are separate entities. And these separate entities cannot uh, may, uh, file a joint application for conversion into one LLP. So uh, practical, uh, uh, practically what, if at all, any applicant wants to convert uh, multiple uh, firms into one LLP, what they'll have to do is first do a merger or a takeover proceedings for all the three or four firms which are in question, uh, bring them under one firm and then get uh, proceed with the conversion of that single firm into the LLP. That means here, yeah, to have a better example, Mehta and Mehta, they want to go for conversion. Shalini, myself, Shalini and Bala, they want to go for conversion. Similarly, Renuka, let me assume Samsima, they want to go for conversion. If the, all the three people go for the conversion, the converter name will be what? It will be Mehta and Mehta, Shalini and Bala, or Renuka and Seema. Because normally what happens, the conversion, when you convert the more or less, the same name, name retains. Only mm -hmm. LLB get added. So if Meta and Meta go for the conversion, it will be Meta and Meta LLB. So they cannot combine everything and find out a new name or something like that. That is the practical things. Because what happens, the identity is actually retained. That is the whole purpose here. That is why the multiple things are not done. As Shalini puts it correctly here, if you want to actually combine all these multiple things, what Mehta and Mehta has to do, Mehta and Mehta has to get first, take over Shalini and Bala, then again take over Renuga and Seema, 
and then apply and they will become meta and meta LNP. That's it. Moving on, uh, next topic is conversion from private limited company into a limited liability partnership. Here, uh, the provisions are uh, Section 56 of the LLP Act and Schedule 3 of the LLP Act. Here, what happens is the uh, private limited company which intends to get itself converted into an LLP should ensure there are not, uh, uh, it does not have any security interest in the assets which is existing at the time of the application and all the uh, shareholders of the company shall become the partners. If at all any, if there is any shareholder who does not approve such an application, here the key is a private limit. Uh, 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 when a firm intends to get itself converted into an LLP, all the partners, all the existing partners, will have to consent for such conversion. But with the company which gets, uh, which is proposing for a conversion into LLP, here what happens is a special majority, which is your two third of the members can vote for. If if it is voted uh, with a special majority, it, uh, this uh, resolution is set to be passed and the conversion is uh, set to be approved. So the dissenting shareholders will have to be given an exit option even before filing an application. All the existing shareholders of the company shall be the partners of the newly incorporated LLP. You cannot get a, a new person as a partner or you cannot exclude an existing shareholder as a partner when you are making an application. So uh, it is advised that the company first uh, uh, have some consensus along with the shareholders and then uh, make an application. Uh, and uh, the unlisted public, uh, the procedure for conversion of a uh, private limited company and unlisted public company into an LLP is uh, uh, similar. So we have been uh, the procedure is being clubbed. Uh, unlisted public company is governed under the section 57 of the LLP Act, read with Schedule 4. So for a private limited to LLP, it is six, uh, section 56, read with Schedule 3. For an unlisted public company into LLP, it is section 57, read with Schedule 4. So the application for conversion, a company which uh, intends to get itself converted will have to first file form fill up uh, along with the all the incorporation and the subscriber sheet, uh, which gives the uh, details about the uh, certificate of incorporation of the company, then the chartered documents which were uh, 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 which were being adopted by the existing company and an application and statement for conversion uh, of the company into LLP shall be filed with form 18. Okay. Uh, uh, the statement of consent of shareholders, like I said earlier, consent of all shareholders is mandatory because every shareholder shall be the partner uh, in an LLP. Okay. And then a statement of assets and liabilities uh, which is uh, given by the auditor of the company should be uh, should also be uh, submitted. Uh, if at all the company has any secured creditors, the consent of the creditors is also required to be submitted. And if there is any uh, regulatory body which is uh, uh, regulating the uh, uh, company's business, then an NOC or an approval from such regulatory body is also uh, required to be submitted. Along with this, like I mentioned earlier, uh, any defaulting entity cannot uh, file an application for conversion. So uh, a copy of the income tax return, an acknowledgement of the copy of ITR, which is filed for the immediately preceding financial year, should also be submitted along with the incorporation documents. Moving on, uh, uh, does anybody have any queries with uh, the uh, incorporation documents? Uh, sir, do we have any questions? Incorporation document is not there, but there are certain queries regarding conversion and other things which you are going to actually cover it later. Okay, yeah. okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, let's move on then. Then registration of conversion immediately after a uh, someone has said, Can you move to previous slide? Yes, madam. Lavanya, 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 Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, okay, hold for some time. Yes, ma slide eight. Okay. Slide eight. Yes. Yeah. Does uh, the plan remain the same for the conversion? No, of the this process? question is not from her. Miss Lavanya, can we move? I think she wanted to check. We can move now. 
Uh, any question? Ms. Yeah, Lavani, you put all you're making any notes. This webinar is uploaded on our uh, YouTube channel, which you can access anytime. Okay. Yeah, fine. You can take it uh, ahead now. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Um, uh, I think she has put a question, I think. Yeah. Move ahead. Uh, Yes. Uh, she is putting a question. Lavanya is putting a question. Is the process the same for conversion of both? Yes, the process is same. It's the same uh, form fill up along with form 18 for conversion of a private company into LLP and an unlisted public company into LLP. The procedure is same. Okay. Good. So, uh, when once you the... please take this query, which query, Ms. Dipti? Dipti Despande. Does the pen remain the same for converse, uh, conversion from partnership to LLP? No. Pad number can never be transferred because pad number is issued particularly for a particular company or the LLP, whatever it is. Right. Although the other agreements, contract, licenses, etc., will get transferred. When it's come to the pad number, which is issued by the income tax department, will the separate identity? So the PAN number has to be surrendered, a new PAN number application has to be made, it has to be obtained. The logic is that your yes. entity character is changed. So your yeah. tax implication also changed. So Correct. accordingly, they have to do assessment. So that, that is, is that is why I said initially there are a lot of homework is required to be done. Because you will be actually thinking the moment I convert it, how do I pay the income tax? You need the PAN number. So that means PAN number application should have been made well in advance. Having in mind the time of the approval you are going to get in a shortest possible period. That is what you have to keep in mind. Pan, Generally, pan, GST. GST. Any tax yeah. registration, any governmental things which is related, all those things has to be surrendered. GST registration is to be surrendered. A new registration is to be obtained. Okay. So, yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, registration of conversion. Once the uh, ROC, uh, the CRC issues the certificate of incorporation confirming the conversion of private limited company into the LLP. Renuka, madam, your voice seems to be breaking. No, I'm not speaking. Okay, okay. No, okay. Some crosstalk was there, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, once the certificate of incorporation is uh, issued, uh, the private limited company will be deemed to be dissolved and the private limited company will have to file form 14 with their respective ROC uh, under whose jurisdiction it has been operating within 15 days, uh, stating the uh, 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 stating the conversion of the private limited company into LLP and ask for uh, uh, removal of its name from the registrar of companies. Here on also, considers, on considers come yes. for conversion of the private limited company to the LLP, audited financial of which year is to be required to be attached. You suppose conversion date is 31st January 2024. If I think the that is the last audited balance sheet is the requirement actually. Am Statement of accounts which is not later than 30 days is what we have to uh, submit to them. Yeah. ITR acknowledgement copy of the previous immediately preceding financial yeah. year is what you have to submit. So there are two different documents. Statement of accounts which is drawn, like you said, if at all your uh, uh, day, uh, proposed date of conversion is January 31st or that 31st Jan is what you are considering, then the SOA December. up to, yes, yes. Up to 31st December, Statement of accounts. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And the ITR receipt should be for the last uh, finance, the last, assess, last assess things. Yeah. Yes, yes. Sir, Divya has another question. No, not now, immediately. Okay, sir. So, there are many uh, questions which are there. Your, uh, as the presentation goes on, you will get answered. Hmm, sure. Uh, two yeah. participants has raised the hand. You, it is relevant to... Ms. Divya has also raised the hand. We'll allow them to speak now or at the end. That will be better. No, no, if it is relevant now, we can talk. There is no problem. Yeah. It will be a little difficult uh, at this juncture. Okay, fine. Uh, IT department, allow the one after other the people who have raised the hand, please. I think I can see Divya Mageshwari has raised the hand. 
Divya Bageshwari, are you there? Can you speak? Divya? Hello? Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. Actually, I just wanted to ask that uh, regarding the auditing, that when the you're seeing more than 30 days, so like if you're converting in the middle of the year, like January, so then do I need to audit my accounts for less than 30 days or just an auditor certificate is good enough? Statement of accounts is good enough. So previous, uh, uh, the audited financial statements till 31st of March 2023 is what you'll have to submit. Statement of accounts uh, normally is your uh, provisional financial statements. Okay. Which, yes. uh, wherein, please ensure you have uh, uh, passed all the entries, booked all the expenses, and there should not be a uh, huge deviation if at all they ask for a revision or uh, if the ROC raises any queries. Because once an application is filed for conversion, the registrar will forward that application to the respective or the concerned departments. They'll forward those applications to PT, PF, ESI, income tax department, GST departments as well. If they see any major differences, then they'll call you for uh, uh, they they'll uh, call you for uh, uh, answers. Okay, so then I don't have to get my accounts audited for March twenty four anymore. Then, since I'm already going to be doing the conversion. Conversion, what is your, it depends on the date, on your proposed date. So if you're getting yourself converted uh, or you are making an application before 31st of March, you don't have to get audited. Say, for example, you file the application for conversion on 21st of March, uh, 2024. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you are aware about the uh, nuances that we have with all the portals and the challenges that all of us face. Okay. Right. So you, if at all your application gets approved, on uh, uh, say 5th or 10th of April. So that would be a challenge for us because uh, the due date for filing the ITR would be September uh, uh, 30th and our, uh, the due date for, uh, you will have to uh, file two types of ITRs there. Okay, on 21st of, up to 21st of March for the existing plan with the income tax department. And then after filing this ITR, you have to surrender your, uh, 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 you, you will have to uh, figure out how it needs to be done. This, uh, the auditor can help you out. And as far as the uh, financial statements and everything is concerned, uh, uh, your effective date of conversion would be 21st of March, your date of making the application. Okay. So their uh, uh, ROC compliances will go as as if you are an LMP for the March twenty four. Yes, Balasir, okay. you want to add something? Yeah, that is what because here you know what happens is as you rightly said, if you are planning a particular activity, there are challenges. The subsequent compliances which is arising out of it. So that is the issue. So that you know to actually carefully apply your mind. You know to plan it accordingly, which is suits and take care of the future. Because doing it today on a hurry, and you should not land up in the compliance problem later. Mm. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. I don't see any other hands raised actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Effect of registration. Once the company is converted into uh, LLP, uh, the name will be removed, uh, the company would be considered as dissolved and the name will be removed from the registrar of uh, companies. All the assets and liabilities of the company will now be the assets and liabilities of the LLP. Uh, any court proceedings, tribunal orders, or uh, uh, any pending cases with any of the authorities in the name of the LLP, uh, in the name of the company, be it private or unlisted, will now get transferred to the LLP. And all the existing contracts of uh, employment, vendor contracts, uh, will now vest with the LNP. Penalties. Penalties, uh, if at all there is any contravention in uh, uh, in when uh, the uh, proposed firm or the when the existing firm or the uh, company uh, has made while filing an application for conversion. After the conversion, the conversion the, after the conversion, after the conversion, conversion I think some I think echo some is coming your voice. Uh, yes, uh, Renuka Madam is... Uh, uh, okay, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, when uh, when an application is filed for conversion and there are few, uh, there have been a few lapses 
okay which uh, which comes into the uh, notice of the roc or any authority after uh, at a later period of time then uh, the llp is uh, uh, penalized for about uh, uh, for a minimum amount of 10 uh, 10000 rupees which can extend to rupees 1 lakh and a further fine of rupees 50 which can extend to 500 rupees for every day for to for which the default continues i don't know somebody is putting a question all mm -hmm. court automatically transfers the name of LLB or we need to inform to court. I don't know what is really meant by this court. Rohit, are you there? What is in your mind? All court automatically transfers the name of LLB. See, when you see, go to discuss also what the LLP, when the conversion takes place, what are the compliances which are required. There are requirements for notification if you are converting the LLP and also the company with reference to notifying to the registrar of firms that she is going to discuss in future. Wait for it, then we will take up this question. I think, Bala sir, it is uh, relating to the litigations which were priorly was held by the private company and it on the conversion of the to LLP, will it be automatically all the litigation will be in the name of LLP. So intimation to the court need to be informed about the status of the change of the structure. Okay, okay. They'll have to intimate the court. Yeah. The company will have to give an intimation to the court about the uh, change in the uh, structuring of the organization because erstwhile it was a firm or a company and now it is an LLP. Somebody is putting a question, what are the possible contravention of provisions during the conversion? Uh, probably we can see that the statement of accounts were not being uh, properly drafted or uh, the declarations have not been given correctly or uh, secured creditor. Uh, uh, there have been uh, cases where a uh, few of the secured creditors at the time of filing an application, they would end up giving the NOC. And once the application is filed, uh, they, they raise an objection that saying that I was coerced to sign the NOC. So these are a few contraventions that uh, we can see. Like in case of a company, this LLP has a prescribed format for preparation of his financial statement, that is the balance sheet, p and etc. Yes. I think to yes. answer this question, LLP per se in the act it does not say anything except the balance financial statement should reflect the true and fair view of the affairs of the LLP. When the true and fair view is there, definitely it will go in the accepted accounting standards which are applicable and it will go in the usual format which is selected by the auditors depending upon whether it is uh, whatever the accounting standard or index or whatever it is, that is what they will select, they will do it because the concept of true and fair view plays a very important role. That is number one. Number two, I think very recently, last seminar, who are all there, they also would be knowing, we discussed this particular matter also, because the Chartered Accountant Institute has actually come out with a guidance note for the LLP's format and other thing and all, which is under discussions and it is actually recommended. So that is what it is required to be done. So when you are talking about the true and fair view, the balance sheet is to be prepared more or less in the line with the companies with the applicable accounting standard. Only thing is accounting standard will be either index or uh, index, uh, Indian accounting standard or whatever it is. Yeah, anything you want to add, Shalini, on that? Nothing, sir. Yeah, um, Nikhil has something to add. Yeah. Uh, yes, please. Nikhil, you can say. See, when we were uh, discussing about uh, automatic transfer on conversion from private limited to LLP, uh, <clears throat> because of this process, it is deemed to have been transferred. However, you have to take the action. Say, for example, when you convert from private limited to LLP, like you apply for new PAN number. Or similarly, if you have some IPR trademarks, then you have to apply, attach a document that because of conversion, now instead of name ABC private limited, now it is ABC LLP. 
So those things need to be done. And in case of immovable properties, yes, you have to, uh, uh, as per the, it's a state subject. So you have to do it. Maybe in some state, there might be some uh, stamp duty liability also can come up in those cases. And the issue could arise in the case of uh, tenancy. I am not to conversion with the tenancy because uh, even in IBC, there are issues that, no? Uh, in IBC, whether it gets passed on, etc. So, tenancy, yeah. I don't think will get passed on because it is the agreement entered between the tenant and all. Whether tenant would like to accept the new or he doesn't want or he wants to accept the different term, that will depend upon it. Yeah. And it will be also as per the terms of the uh, tenant agreement also. If the agreement talks about any such uh, conversions or effect of the things sometimes they foresee and they mention in the contract also in the agreements so if yeah, there is yeah, any sometimes clause, then it will be easier to get the concern it's all talking about the concern prior concerns for all the conversions so that yeah. it is a smooth sailing for once the impact uh, effect happens yeah many times many times landlord puts a condition that if you change the uh, constitution of your uh, entity that you require his written consent. Yes. Yeah, so that is normally already the mentioned, case. then automatic tenancy rights will get transferred. Yeah. yeah. That is normally the case. You got the very good point, Nikhil. Because tenant being a third party, he will always have his right actually because he is under the agreement with the earlier party. The new party may not be applicable, uh, you know, agreeable for him. Yeah. And as far as those accounting and financial statement is concerned, there is a technical guide issued by the uh, ICAI for LLP. So we can follow the format. If uh, uh, Both the formats are given. If you are under accounting standard, then there is a different format. And if you fall under India's, there is a different format. And then guidance note, which is uh, uh, issued for the comments, it is not yet notified. Once guidance note becomes, it is more binding. But we can take a help of a uh, technical guide. Okay, thanks, Nikhil. Yeah, that's it. Thank thanks you. a lot, Nikhil. Thanks a lot for sharing. Ma, Ms. Mukta, uh, your ans questions answer we have covered very well now. Okay. Yeah. Salini, go ahead. So moving on, uh, unlisted public company has about uh, has more than two hundred shareholders. Can this get converted into LLP? Answer is yes. LLP, there is no uh, maximum ceiling of partners or designated partners for an LLP. The one challenge that we professionals might face is how do we get the consent of all the shareholders? And once the LLP is incorporated on conversion, how do we ensure the signatures or the swift execution of all the uh, partnership agreement and other documents. So this is one thing which a professional will have to uh, keep in mind, uh, arrange for all these uh, signatories, availabilities, check with them, and then make an application for uh, uh, conversion. The two people has raised the hand, IT department. Yeah, you can speak. I think there is one Sanket and Rohit. Mr. Rohit. Mr. Sanket? Are you there? Rohit, are you there? You can speak. No? Yes, yes. Yeah. So if uh, all the uh, like conversion is completed, then all the like uh, court cases are automatically uh, like uh, transferred in the name of LLP or we need to inform to the authority? Uh, this question we answered earlier, Rohit. You, okay. you will have to inform this to the court authority yourself. You have to uh, give an intimation to them stating uh, the change in the constitution of the OGA entity. And same for the income tax. Correct. Okay. Right. You, Thank you. With income tax department, you'll obviously get a fresh pan. You, income you have tax, to, you will surrender the old pan and get the new surrender. pan. And okay. so long as the old pan was there, whatever the issues are there, that will continue to get assessed actually till the okay. issues are settled. Okay. I put that way that see, you are changing the entity. So even your name 
though you keep the same, but it will add something. So all your registrations is required to be changed. It doesn't change automatically. Okay. All the uh, authorities will not come to know unless you intimate. Okay. So that's why that process you have to actually do it. The okay. thing that continuity does not disturb. See, we can say as a concept, the continuity of operation doesn't get hampered. That is the beauty of that's the benefit. But all the intimation changes, change in the registration number, and especially tax authority, we said that since your tax implication, stamp duty implication will change. So mm -hmm. you have to understand that same in advance and whether it is beneficial or not and all that, that you can take it later on. But again, everywhere, and if there is, as just now we mentioned, that rent agreement, if there is outside party get affected and they have entered into contract, your contract should pick like that. If the same, it converted, it will continue contract. Otherwise, you take in advance the con concurrence and then you continue. It is not that by law, this mentioning, all the contracts will automatically turn into. If you yourself are party and it is there, so better you cover in that also. That also we discussed. Okay, thank you. See, once you get the permission that the, edit, the conversion is actually approved, then you know what happens? Changing from the old name to the new name with the respective authorities, you know to actually take it up, you know to give the necessary documents, tell them and get it changed in the name which will hold good. As per the income tax is concerned, since the plan was issued as a specific as simply puts it very categorically, even after the conversion is done, although the virtually the company is non-existent from that plane, since that date the company was in existence, whatever the litigation, whatever the issues, whatever the assessment which are pending, which will continue to be there as if the company is in existence, yeah, all the directors, all the people who are responsible, they will continue to get the notice. They will not attend, they will not settle the issues. Yeah. Mr. Saket has raised the hand. IT department allowing him to speak. Yes, Saket Jain, you can speak. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sir, I want to ask that uh, what if uh, there is a change in shareholding pattern between the last audited balance sheet and the date of uh, conversion? How we can uh, inform them about the same? Are there any specific uh, procedure for that? Uh, sir, yes, Mr. Sanket. So what you can do is you give a, along with, while giving the consent of all the shareholders, you give a list of uh, shareholders as on 31st March 2023 and as on current date. And you can give the uh, uh, exit date of one of the shareholder who has transferred. And if at all it is transferred to an existing shareholder, you say this shares are transferred. Hence, there is an increase in person X excess shareholding and person Y who is the outgoing shareholder, his shares are now zero. Otherwise, if it is a new person coming in, then uh, uh, Mr. Y has transferred all his shares to uh, Mr. Z and uh, Y's shareholding is zero. Z shareholding is uh, whatever the shares being transferred from uh, uh, Y to Z. Uh, this is what you can do. Uh, sir, you want to add anything here? No, I have nothing, but I can ask uh, either Dipti or Renuka to share. Are we required any uh, auditor certification for that also? No, not required anything because it will be shareholders uh, transfer is uh, as per the uh, articles of association which we do it. So whatever the board procedure which you follow and, and the concern as rightly Nalini has said. So all those intimate change uh, we need to reflect pre and post not only that the there will be a, has to be obtained accordingly not only that there will be a index of shareholders will be there which is actually a statutory register which is maintained always uh, updated for cross checking that can be done yeah yeah okay yeah now it's nikhil separate. wanted to say something his hand is also raised nikhil patel I think she has covered. We can move ahead. Okay. Yeah. One minute. Can I add something? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. See, now what we are discussing will be more relevant now that we know on 28 October there is a notification and compulsory demat is coming even in the case of some of the private limited companies. Yes. Now, the moment it falls under a demat, then share transfer is not in the hands of the company. 
So at those times, this will be more relevant. Otherwise, what happens for transfer, it comes to the board. So you can control. Here, you won't be able to control. Uh, so uh, Mr. Nikhil, I'm sorry to differ. So what happens is, if a private limited company shares are getting transferred on a DMAT uh, mode as well, RTA will not approve unless the board resolution copy is submitted to them for a private limited company. Unlisted uh, company shares can be transferred freely, but private company shares are not transferred unless okay. so or it is not approved as transferred shares unless there is a board resolution and the RTA will not approve such share transfer. So that's a good part. So at least company will know who are the Correct. shareholders on company. So yes. It's in the control of the management. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Yeah, you can move forward. Yes, sir. Thank you. So now we are discussing provisions of conversion of an LLP into company. Till now it was a company into LLP. Now uh, LLP into company. So here, uh, for a for an LLP to get converted into company, all the partners will have to give their consent, and all the partners will be the shareholders of the uh, proposed company. Uh, here, what happens is, along with the spice form, uh, the applicant, which is the LLP, will also have to file URC one for conversion of uh, uh, the LLP into a private into a company. This proposed company could be private or uh, a public company as well. Uh, there is no restriction on an uh, LLP getting converted into a public company. However, an LLP which has uh, two or three partners and they intend to get converted into a public company, they have to ensure they have at least seven partners when they file an application for conversion into a public company. So what the uh, LLP has to do is first increase their partners from uh, two to seven and then make an application for conversion into a public limited company. The other process all uh, remains the same, say be it uh, providing all your all the documents, statement of accounts, then NOC from the secured creditors. Uh, the, these are all same and the effect of registration will also continue to be same like we discussed for conversion of a firm or a company into LLP. So we will not be deliberating once again on the same uh, topic. Sir, uh, uh, Reduka Madam and Bala sir, you want to add anything here? No, nothing from mine. Nothing. One uh -huh. question has been asked here. Uh-huh. Can LLB be dissolved or struck off within the LLB Act without being converting into a company similar to Companies Act 2013 or under IBC 2016? Yes, LLB can go for a strike-off. Yeah, LLB can be dissolved. It is in two modes. One mode is actually if the partners want to get it dissolved, they can actually do and they can get it done. Or the regulator also can do because this is there. Uh, uh, Mr. Only, uh, only, only thing is IBC Act is asking. Okay. Sir, uh, we are having an upcoming session. A forthcoming session is on uh, winding up probably okay. a couple of weeks later. Okay. Uh, in the master class, we are trying to cover all the provisions of uh, LLP Act. So okay. the last session will be on uh, winding up. Uh, okay. So, you will have to wait for uh, our deliberations on winding up and strike off. Okay, okay, okay. And okay, I think now, is available. now let her complete the uh, her presentation, then we take the question. So, that will be fine, right? Okay, okay, yes. sure. Because we will not able to finish otherwise. Okay. okay. Because see, many things are coming in later on, maybe ask here. Yeah, that is what I also said. Yeah. yeah. Better, yeah. So moving on, uh, what are the companies which cannot be converted into LLP? So uh, companies which are uh, incorporated as a guarantee company, Section 8 company which is into charitable uh, organizations or providing any non-profit uh, services, then banking companies, insurance companies, then company uh, banking and insurance companies cannot get converted because they are separately regulated by their uh, uh, Banking uh, Act and insurance uh, regulatory body. Then companies which have unlimited liability. The concept of LLP is having a limited liability wherein the partners will not have to uh, uh, take the liability on a personal level. So unlimited companies, uh, uh, companies with uh, unlimited liability cannot get converted into LLP. 
companies which have special licensing approvals cannot get converted and uh, when a foreign company or a foreign llp is getting converted into llp uh, uh, the entities which have fdi linked performances or the entities which were incorporated or have raised funds through approval route or government route cannot get converted and entities which have external commercial borrowings or companies which have external commercial borrowings cannot get converted into llp llps per se are not eligible to raise funds through ecbs so they cannot get converted into llps somebody put up a question yeah. nbfc can be converted to llb llb per se is not actually allowed to carry nbfc activities so no. NB, nbfc per se cannot actually convert it as it is to the llb if the NPSC wants to convert into LLB, they have to give it to the NPSC, they have to open the article, they have to do something differently, then only they can get converted. Yeah, coming to these companies with spe special approval, I just want to add like special purpose vehicles, companies which are incorporated, all those companies are also covered under this, which cannot be converted into LLP. Companies with special licensing or approvals, which Nalini has said, in this, I just want to add special purpose vehicles which are being incorporated. Okay. Um, I think Mr. Balaji has raised the hand. Yeah, yes, Balaji. Yeah, unmute him, IT department. Can you unmute Mr. Balaji? If any if any project which is partially done by the old entity yeah your question the new was that doesn't want to continue it what is the mechanism for this so it is like in a business if you are a uh, business otherwise also you have an executed contract and you now you don't want to perform the same thing changing in entity and doing your non-performance contract mm -hmm. the liability remains the same your rights and liability Okay. Because uh, the, uh, according to the contract uh, terms yeah. and condition, they give the notice and they can get it. Yeah, I right. can request panelists to add her practical experiences also there. Please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Man. So if at all uh, uh, the LLP does not want to continue with the uh, contract, you will obviously have your uh, exit terms in that contract. You have to comply with those exit terms and uh, uh, just pull out, uh, pull out of the contract. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Balasar, you want to add anything on this? Uh, no, no, you have covered it. This is absolutely correct. Because any contract, when you say always there is a clause of exit, termination and clause, yes. exit clause, it is always actually built in. So, accordingly, you know, to become a contract per se will get automatically transferred in the conversion is there. Then it is up to them to take a call as a IT second. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Miss Renuka, you want to add something? No, no, it's uh, well explained. Thank you. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, so why why do companies prefer uh, LLPs? So say, for example, and I, uh, the promoters found a incorporated a company and then now they want to go into LLP. So what are the benefits of uh, converting your converting a company into LLP? So in LLP, the, the compliances or the nuances of compliances is very less. Uh, it's not uh, unlike your, your uh, board meetings every quarter and then any AGM. Uh, these uh, meetings are uh, uh, not uh, uh, mandated by part LLP Act. Uh, and then uh, statutory audit is not mandated for small LLPs. So, uh, and then there is no limit or a cap on the uh, amount that can be distributed as profit to the partners. And there is no limit on the uh, uh, third party borrowings which uh, LLP can uh, uh, borrow. And uh, there is no limit uh, on the, the related party transactions. And ma minimum alternate tax is not applicable or it's not implemented on LLPs as of year, yet. So, moving on, uh, uh, the next topic is. So, coming to reduce compliance. I just want to add, coming to reduce compliance, ROC filings are also very less. Correct. Correct. So with this, we have uh, uh, concluded the first half of our webinar, which is on conversion of uh, uh, conversion into LLP. Now we will be moving to foreign LLPs.
so for an llp uh, is a uh, is an llp which is formed or registered outside india which intends to have a place of business in india in such cases uh, the foreign llp uh, will have to make an application to the reserve bank of india and get uh, get their approval and then uh, make an application to the registrar of companies for uh, registering their place of uh, business so uh, registration the process of registration for the foreign llp like i said earlier the prior approval of reserve bank of india is mandatory and this process is similar to the process of setting up of a branch office in india and once you have the approval of rbi uh, the applicant will have to make an application in form 25 for uh, a name name approval and once the name is approved by the crc The, that approved name is valid for a period of three years, within which the foreign LLP will have to establish their place of office, and within thirty days of establishing their place of office, file form twenty seven along with all the other documents, which will be discussed in the next slide. Say if at all the foreign LLP is unable to set up their place of business uh, within three years. and the name is about to lapse or expire then before the expiry of the name they'll have to uh, file an app, uh, extension for name application in the same form 25 and this uh, extended name approval is valid for another 3 years moving on what are the documents to be submitted by the foreign llp along with form 27 form 27 is uh, is the form which is filed for registering the place of business in india for the foreign llp so here uh, uh, they'll have to file the certificate of incorporation or the registration certificate or the charter documents which have been issued by the uh, country of incorporation in which uh, the foreign llp is incorporated Al uh, along with this they'll also have to submit their uh, place of office which is their uh, registered office in the country of its incorporation then the address of office where, uh, uh, of the uh, location where the they intend to uh, run their office or their establishment in india this uh, uh, this is your basically the rental agreement executed with your landlord in india along with the utility bill and its noc apart from this uh, the foreign llp will have to designate or authorize two or more individuals are residents in india as their authorized personnel to receive communications on behalf of the foreign llp and to receive the notices or to serve any notice if at all any notice is served by the department to accept those on behalf of the llp in india moving on uh, does anybody have any questions uh, here on the incorporation process Nikhil actually said here yeah, alternative minimum tax is applicable to LLP. In corporation, it is not there, but Miss Sita has raised the hand. I don't know. It is pertaining to if in corporation, then you speak otherwise. We can take it later. Miss Sita, you can unmute. Yes, Miss Sita, you can speak now. I think she is not there. Uh, Sita, can you carry on? Yeah, and then. Okay. Moving on, uh, FDI in LLP. Uh, FDI in LLP first, the uh, conditions uh, laid down under the LLP Act needs to be complied, and then you will have to refer along with the uh, FEMA provisions. FDI is permitted under the automatic route wherein 100% FDI is allowed and provided there are no FDI linked performances uh, at the time of investment if at all there is any FDI linked performance then such llp is not eligible to receive any investments from foreign body corporates sectoral caps uh, sectoral cap uh, uh, the maximum amount which can be uh, invested by foreigners is subject to the uh, provisions of uh, fema ndi rules 2019 foreign investment and up, under approval routes or the government route is subject for security clearance by the ministry of uh, home affairs and uh, 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 and the uh, ministry of defense investment in an llp can be made either through acquisition 
that is by uh, acquisition of uh, or transfer of shares or the, uh, or by or uh, by way of capital contribution at the time of incorporation by being a uh, subscriber to the uh, uh, subscription of the capital downstream and uh, investment by an llp which is not owned and controlled by an indian resident or owned and controlled by resident outside india is allowed in an indian company uh, in sectors where foreign investment of percent is permanent under the automatic route and there is no fdi link performance conditions next a company having foreign investment engaged in sector where foreign investment up to 100% is permitted and if they and if they don't have any fdi uh, link performance conditions then they can get get themselves converted into llp under the automatic route and then make an intimation uh, to the rbi if at all an llp having foreign investment and they don't have uh, uh, any fdi linked performances they also can get converted into a company under the automatic route and any subsequent investment in the llp either by uh, by uh, capital contribution or by way of acquisition or uh, transfer of profit share from their co partner it uh, the valuation aspects needs to be concerned uh, sorry needs to be considered and without uh, uh, valuation uh, you cannot uh, transfer uh, your profit share or raise additional investments then in case of transfer of capital contribution or profit share from a person resident in india to a person resident outside india uh, the consideration shall not be less than the fair price of the capital contribution or the profit share of the llp which is determined by the valuer people agarwal has actually put up the question to raise the hand actually what approval is required from rbi name of the forms etc to be filed uh, sir, uh, could you please repeat the question? What, what are the approval is required from the Reserve Bank of India? Name mm -hmm. of the forms, etc., to be filed. I think when okay. you are talking about the foreign direct Form investment, the question is, is not hard. The FDRS, question is uh, vaguely uh, clear. Ah. Let me let me try and uh, let's uh, let's uh, no let finish this PPT uh, and then we can take it. This it may yes. regarding FDI or foreign LLP. It yes. Can. Yes. So then we have a couple of more slides. Yeah. Then we'll take it. Yeah. Yes. We have a couple of more slides. Let's finish the deliberations and take all questions at once. Okay. Yes. So, uh, investment in LLP. Well, how do you get the funds into the LLP? So, uh, all the funds to the LLP should be routed through a banking channel. Uh, through either NRE or uh, FCNR accounts maintained with the. Uh, <laughs> And then any uh, remittances, be yeah. it the distribution of profits or any dis uh, disinvestment proceeds should again be through bank accounts and it should go to the bank account of the partner alone, uh, a partner only, you cannot designate somebody else to receive on your behalf and it should go to the NRE or the FCNR account of the existing partner. So next, reporting requirement. So likewise, we file uh, uh, form FCGPR or form FCTRS when we when the company raises funds or there are any transfer of shares uh, by the shareholder. Here, uh, when LLP raises uh, any capital contribution, be it the initial subscription or the subsequent uh, uh, increase in the capital contribution, the LLP will have to report in form LLP1 to the uh, uh, Reserve Bank of India through its AD bank on uh, firm's portal uh, through the single master form. And any uh, uh, this reporting should be made within 30 days from the date of which you receive the amount of consideration. Then uh, if there are any disinvestments or transfer of capital contribution from one of the existing partner to a new partner, to a, a local or a non-resident partner, in those cases, uh, the uh, Reporting of form LLP 2 should be made within 60 days of receipt of funds by the uh, transferor. So here, the onus of reporting of this uh, transfer of capital contribution lies with the transferor or transferee. The, owner, uh, the onus of reporting of the uh, initial capital contribution or the subsequent capital contribution lies with the LLP. So, uh, and all these reporting should be fi uh, uh, filed under the single master form uh, uh, through their AD bank on the RBI firm's portal. 
erstwhile prior to 2018 all such uh, llp fdi compliances had to be made manually because bt ebis portal ebis portal did not have uh, have a me uh, mechanism or uh, an option for llps to make their application for uh, uh, capital contribution so uh, renuka madam you want Anything yeah, there was a question from Rohit. Uh, is an evaluation certificate required for incoming foreign contribution? The answer is yes. And there is also a question: Who will be the valuer in case of the LLB, CA, or merchant banker, and what method yeah. of the valuation acceptable to valuation? Uh, the valuation method acceptable is uh, NAV or DCF method. Yes. And uh uh 11 ua as far as uh, non resident a chartered a chartered accountant uh, valuation report is sufficient okay for the uh, reporting requirements always uh, as a uh, updated one you can always check in rbi portal notification master direction there will be a reporting thing so in that also you can always uh, and uh, check about the latest things uh, what are the requirements though in the forms also they will be mentioning but uh, that uh, notification also can be looked into for uh, for the audition yeah salin is someone requested slide 22 to be shown again yes ma'am i think someone has raised the question that uh, whether nro account is not permitted no nro account is not permitted uh, is there any income tax is applicable for in partner for which he she earns profit from india i think that is not at present relevant question that is explained in the last uh, seminar actually when we talked about the seminar i think uh, you can refer the yeah, yeah. recorded uh, webinar mr balaji has raised the hand yeah mr balaji unmute and you can speak i yes, asked madam is there any suppose profit earned by the foreign partner in india it is uh, income tax is applicable how it is Yes. Profit. How it will be paid uh, then? Mr. Sorry, Mr. Balaji, what? this this uh, uh, taxation provisions were uh, covered by uh, by uh, charter. The last webinar we covered in exhaustive way. Yes. So, you yes. know, if we club here, then the taxation. Uh, so that's why we kept that separately. Okay, yes. Man. Sorry, it's I missed it. Before our last uh, mixed webinar. Yeah. and if there is uh, any still question you can and one of our mr nikhil patel who is a participant my good friend was That's only a right. panelist so you put the question and uh, we will see that thank you madam separately thank you. thank you thank you you refer our last week's webinar and if still question you can put a mail to us theek hai madam thank you madam thank you thank you yes alidi ma'am we are open for uh, question and answers yeah it's okay. over Yes. Yeah, then Mr. Bala, you can start the uh, taking questions from first chat, and then we'll allow everyone to speak. Okay. Taxation and conversion is also covered. I think taxation on um, conversion. Uh, this was covered in our uh, previous uh, uh, La last webinar. In our so if, section forty-seven, yeah. uh, subsection thirteen B. you will have to see that uh, our uh, chartered accountant has covered this in the previous uh, webinar correct what will be the treatment of the redeemable preference share in case of the conversion will they be treated as the partners of the llb conversion or will it be treated at par with the equity shareholders that is question number 1 question number 2 is similarly if a company had issued the optionally convertible unsecured debentures will it be allowed to be converted to the llb if yes what will be the treatment of such a debenture or conversion to llb assuming that we have the concern from all the debenture holders agreeing to such conversion so balasar would you like to answer here uh no i will ask redeemable preference to, shares, yeah. sir redeemable preference shares yeah. they have to redeem and then go for conversion correct okay. you are right absolutely 
same with the other uh, loan also what you said because uh, kashi kashi instruments are not allowed for conversion okay. so anything need to be converted into equity right. then only it can be uh, it will be allowed for contribution otherwise it will not be so that will so all the to, first to clean up your balance sheet you need to clean up your balance sheet in terms of all these things okay that means uh, before you go for the conversion all this uh, activities has to be converted it should be put in the equity then only it will be considered correct yes yes okay what if the reporting is not made for fdi rbi up to 3 years so uh, fdi fdi is not reported up to 3 years uh -huh. suggestion is first go for the uh, reporting uh -huh. and then file uh -huh. a continuation of delay Not condonation. No, compounding, you, you know, to go because only do the condonation. Not condonation. Compounding. Sorry. Ah, uh, compounding obligation. Uh, it is that non-compliance treated equally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It you is a non-compliance. Basically, you know, to take the rectification action for non-compliance, setting right the thing. Not only doing the late compliance, but also paying the penalty by filing the compounding application. Yes. I have a query regarding the conversion of LLB into the company. Whether the consent of the all parties individual needs to be obtained or consent in the form of a resolution passed by the parties meeting will be sufficient. Consent individual need to be obtained. Individual should be submitted. Okay. What if reporting? Ah, uh, this is I already answered. Why an R O account cannot be used for the investment? Then it will be like a resident investment. It's a law, right, Salini? NR account is not allowed. NR account is not allowed, madam. Now, why it is not allowed? That uh... no, no, no. See, because there is a little confusion, I believe here, because when she was talking about the FDI account, that is the question is actually relevant here, because the person is actually putting a question here. Why NR account is not used for investment? It will be a resident investment. Resident is... investment, not a foreign direct investment. Ah, that. That accounts is basically your uh, 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 your savings bank account in India. Yeah. An Indian resident savings account. Yeah. So is... it will be treated as a resident investment. Yeah, that is right. You you yourself has given the answer here. It cannot <laughs> be a, a FDI. It will be a resident investment. Again, same thing. RBI for RBI. Same thing is coming RBI. Ah. Uh, Is there any income tax uh, applicable? That uh, I think we said actually. Yeah. Who will be the valuer? That also answered. we are actually answered. Should FG GRP be filed by LLB for the foreign capital contribution received? No, it is LLB. It's not LLB GPR uh, for the LLB foreign. LLB one. Received. Different it form is, is there actually. Form. Anyway, in in what return has to be filed? But only thing is, it is not FG GPR. It is that LLB form. As she discussed actually, for LLB is covered in uh, okay. Somebody is asking AOA, MOA that I already answered because LLB when you are talking about it is the LLB agreement. It does not require the AOA and MOA. Then somebody asked the question, what is the small uh, LLB? They already said in the definition which are not requiring the statutory audit that is turnover not exceeding forty lakh or the contribution whose contribution does not exceed twenty five lakhs. They don't have to have the Statutory audit actually done. Nickel says here alternative minimum tax is applicable to LLP. I think this we discussed last time how we to be actually go about it because the thing is it is actually subject to book profit with adjustment etc. That is what we talked about it. I think you can refer the last taxation point on that. Limit or no limit in the distribution of the profit to LLP? No limit. NPSC can be converted LLB. That we have actually answered. If the LLB is silent about the conversion to private limited company, however, written consent has been obtained from the designated partners and partners. ROC while scrutinizing the URC one will ROC object the conversion, stating LLB deed is silent about conversion. There is no such a clause required to be mentioned, sir. Yeah. It is if you give get the consent that uh, it is by specific provision of the law. Yeah, you no, you can do the conversion. This is not a prerequisite to be mentioned. Okay. 
do we need to re-register land if it is standing as the fixed assets and the pay stamp duty again on conversion? Because in case of the stamp special suit act like uh, RAICO, there is a confusion. Now, stamp duty is the state subject. So naturally, it is not the universal subject. And if you are saying a uh, land, etc., and all this, it has to be get transferred, it has to be get transferred. But while transferring it, some states, they collect uh, stamp duties. Some states, they give some concession, etc., and other thing and all. It is being a state subject. You know, to go by the state subject, specific uh, stamp duty act. Here, you can't help anything. You know, to follow that. Anything you want to add, Renuka, on this? No, absolutely right, sir. It's a state subject and need to be complied as per the state subject only. Because the same issue, we find it in the amalgamation and mergers also. So it need to be dealt as per the state subject. But we need to inform them and as per their requirement, we have Yeah, we need to do. That action part need to be done. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not so any, you know, It can't be automatic. Like any uh, registration... Uh, Effect need to be changed, all the action need to be done. Yeah. To be integrated, everything. Now, off late, everything is in the portal driven. So, how whether the portals are customized to uh, do to do these changes or not, I'm not sure about that. But we need to do a, a bit of change so that the change is impacted and the change constitutional changes are being reflected. Conversion on new formation of the LLB, which is not a time-consuming process, or is, is it a time-consuming process, or it is better? Conversion I, of LLB. I think the answer is uh, no, but the uh, with the offlet with the ministry MCA being uh, troublesome for that, the answer, <laughs> practical answer <laughs> is longer period. Preparing the forms take lot more time than the ROC takes it for approval. It so really that's the, the process is uh, short, but the practical thing is longer. <laughs> but the conversion, you know, you have that uh, legacy of goodwill, no? That's why you don't want to lose that. That's why people prefer conversion. If you are okay with that, you go with the LLP new formation. That is not a big issue. But that entity, other entity remain, then you have to close that. You have to keep in mind that also. There is some business entity. And if you convert that, though the process has complexity and all that, that continuity remains. But if you are okay with that, then you start new LLP, transfer the business, or if you can start new business in that, and that entity you have to close. That closing ceremony also you have to do. So keep in mind all that. And accordingly, you have to take a call. Any project which is partially executed, I think that we actually discussed. If you are converting a partnership... No, that is LLP. one question. No? Uh, yeah, is... If a company getting converted into LLP, what will happen to reserves? Will it be freely transferable to partners? I think... Uh, we have covered this again. Accounting treatment is a separate thing we have taken. Accounting treatment is not covered in this uh, presentation. Yeah. No, it will be as part of the statement of LLP. Of accounts of in the LLP. Yeah. Because reserve, there are two things. One is actually general reserve, one is actually a specific reserve for the purpose. If the general reserve is there, it is nothing but it is a quasi capital itself. Okay, so in case of the general reserve, which is not meant for any particular purposes, etc., and other thing at all, that will actually get transferred. But if the reserve is created for the specific purposes, then that will not get transferred. That will serve only for the specific purposes. Maybe any project partially executed that we have talked about it. Plan number also, we talked about it. What kind of the activities to be initiated with the income tax GST upon conversion, private limited or LLB? You yes. know, to surrender your registration, you know, to get the new registration. That is the thing. Court cases we have said, all possible contravention that also we discussed. What will be the exact date of the conversion for accounting purposes? Exact date is what you actually decided. The appointed date, what you are saying, the conversion, correct? Because the ROC will give you. The approval 
that will be the date i think sorry yes sir the date of incorporate the date mentioned on the certificate of incorporation is the date when the llp comes into existence yeah. and the firm to a firm or the company ceases to exist or put automatically terms element that we talked about it pan again the same question what we talked about it old pan and new pan can llp dissolve or strike up that also we took up in case of the conversion from company llp roc is insisting the audit financial audited financials so that will discuss audited statement provisional statement yeah but if one director or the shareholder has expired after the last audit and annual filing then what will we do then we discuss this so we discuss this That's actually in, she yes. actually explained no between the last uh, audited balance sheet and the statement of accounts which is to be submitted on the particular date we discuss actually on this yes whether merger of uh, i think if he may be referring that only there are two director two shareholder yeah then yeah. you have to increase it and increase and then you can go ahead you have to comply you can't be non compliant and then convert whether merger of an llp and partnership firm is permissible you need to check this let us have any idea merger no. of an llb and partnership firm is permissible no idea no sir no idea you need to check okay. if we go for conversion on 31 that is she has already said actually she answered for conversion of the private limited for public, yes, that also we discussed out of three director one has expired we discuss uh, the same thing yeah what in case of the conversion the form of the llb fine we discuss already if conversion take in the middle of the first year the two accounts will have to be prepared that also i think we talked about it even yeah. last uh, session we talked in our monthly gst we talked about it statement of the accounts and the advertisement to be released in paper may also be referred to the conversion of llb into private uh, limited what is the statement of account mm -hmm. and the advertisement to be released in paper may also be required for conversion of llb into private limited no there is no newspaper advertisement uh, required for conversion of a, of an llp into public company or a private company it is not required however if at all a public company gets uh, uh, proposes for conversion into a uh, uh, llp then uh, the newspaper advertisement will come into picture because public ma is this so should be a, uh, uh, it is a uh, widely held company and yeah. listed public entities will have to give Can a proprietorship firm or HEF be converted into LLP? Proprietorship, no, because you are proprietorship is normally a sole proprietor. The requirement of uh, LLP has minimum requirement is two partners. So you cannot convert a sole prop a proprietorship firm into LLP. No, HEF. HUF uh, practically I haven't come across uh, Renuka madam uh, can you please no, uh, HUF is also a constitution of uh, karta and co partners so if we can just make them as a partner sort of thing and convert it can be otherwise if it's only the karta who will be again it, the requirement will be one so the minimum requirement will be two LLP private and form form is the same that we actually talked the stamp duty we actually discussed process the same for both that also we talked again the point number question comes slide eight can a section can a section eight company private limited be converted into an LLP no no this we have already discussed okay can there be a more partner support from the all shareholder in the conversion from private limited company to llp no you cannot have a new coming partner uh, uh, a new person as a partner while filing for incorporation your existing shareholders will be your partners of the proposed llp 
okay so you cannot add one new person by making an application or you cannot exclude an existing shareholder from being a partner in the proposed llp subsequent to that you can add it after that you can uh, make an amendment to the agreement and uh, go ahead and add i think multiple partnership uh, multiple conversion we talked about it somebody put up question mm -hmm. what if there are two or more meta and meta partnership firms it cannot happen generally because normally what happens is the similar names are not granted to my in my opinion even otherwise also multiple anyway is not permitted correct na uh as regards name approval you can take the noc from others and if similar name mm -hmm. but exactly similar you have to add the indicative if because both are separate in the entity no that's why you can have a coin word can be same as you know normal partnership firm have an option to merger with each other if yes then under which act Uh, sir, yep. the question was on merger of partnership firms. No, oh, yeah, partnership firm. We are not talking the partnership firm. This thing is talking if normal mm -hmm. partnership firm have option to merge with each other. If mm -hmm. yes, then under which act? A registered partnership firm is governed under the Indian Partnership Act, nineteen thirty-two. Yeah. So they have to uh, take, uh, see the problem. We got that only, and we can't comment here that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can private limited company demerge into private limited company and the LLB? I think demerger is altogether something different, and conversion is altogether different. Conversion different. is different. It is a scheme you can have to do. You bring it as a scheme and put it before NCLT. It can be done. They both are two different activity transactions. So first yeah. to deal with demerger, and later on, if you want to do the conversion. You then do the conversion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Please share the PPT. That's what many people are saying. PPT is not generally shared because uh, the uh, webinar is actually recorded. It is disseminated. It is available to you. That comes along with the PPT. You can view it there. So PPT is, we are not sharing it. Do we need to release the lease leave license agreement in the name of the newly formed LLP? uh yes because uh, earlier uh, it was it would have been in the firm name or the company name you will have to yes. enter into an uh, addendum or an amendment agreement yeah yeah that's what you said actually all the follow up yes. action whichever is required wherever it is required to be changed you will have to take a individual mm -hmm. action actually yeah any comment from panelist okay okay any valuation Certificate required for incoming foreign contribution. Yes, we discuss. I think. No? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. See, discuss actually in the PPT. What document required for becoming the foreign national as a partner LLB and same document required that also she declared notary. She talked about it very well on this. Notary and apostle of all your yeah. uh, of the passport and other uh, documents wherein you give uh, the bank statement or the utility bill. That is what you will have to submit. If at all it is a uh, uh, non-resident individual for a body corporate, you have the body corporate board resolution along with their charter documents. Okay. Acha, somebody has commented, Rajasri. At the time of registration, the name has to be cleared. If there is already one name is registered, you can't register on the same name in spite of NOC. Yeah, the same will not be allowed. I said that coin word kind of thing can be with the NOC, but that also. Uh, has issued certificate and there is that valid can see a sign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Bala, you can take this. Sorry, I entered. Chartered account note is no. chartered account note is issued a certificate under DCF for FDI. Is that valid? Can see a sign. Like chartered account note is issued certificate and can see a sign. I am really. Uh, confused uh, for I it. think this is, there is some uh, uh, confusion here. Chartered mm -hmm. account uh, accountant has issued a certificate. He should only sign. So here, yeah. can see a sign. Uh, we. Uh, yeah, it's basically, uh, uh, we have clarified under any method that two methods. CA can sign that. Correct. Correct. Filing of form fourteen is mandatory upon conversion. Yes. 
yeah. within it 15 is. days of getting your yeah. uh, new incorporation certificate you have to uh, uh, file it with the registrar of firms if at all it was the firm which got converted to the and to the roc if at all uh, a company was got uh, was converted into llb yeah you are well covered actually in that ppt in in case one minute at the time of registration name to be in case where there are some shareholders who do not approve the conversion the process will exist uh, be given for them you will have to give the exit to them even before making an application to the uh, for conversion yeah because, because in in case of the companies i think it is a special resolution will special be special resolution sir we deliberated on yeah, this yeah we deliberated on this also yeah yes Affidavit with the dissolution of the LLB upon conversion is recorded in case of the conversion of a LLB company because both are under same ministry and does it actually required? Yes, because the registrar of uh, the register maintained by the registrar for companies and for LLPs are different. They are two different books. Okay. So you will have to see it like this. Uh, if you have to strike off your name from the registrar of companies, then uh, you will have to submit the affidavit. Only then it will get uh, uh, striked off from the register of companies and your name will be get entered into the register of LLPs. You have oh. to kill one entity to take birth in another place. How then, to submit? Then, then the rebirth kind of thing, conversion. Yeah. How to submit the statements of the if the document related to the conversion of the LLB to company exceed the maximum allowable size in spite of ERC one? You How will to... have to uh, scan it in a proper resolution if the size exceeds. This is this is something which you will have to take up with the help desk. Yeah, you need to have the resolutions, you know, in a particular way. It can be done actually. Yeah. That's all I think so. One minute. Somebody has put a one more question. Yeah, back. some raise of uh, raise hands are raised. No yeah. person can sign any certificate who is not issuing the same. Supreme Court 2022. Yeah, yeah this is, uh, this is we have allowed a, yeah. you can unmute and speak, please. JK. Participant who raised the hand can speak, please. Are you there, JK Jaswatiya? Can you speak? Unmute and speak, Mr. JK Jaswatiya. Unable to unmute. Okay. Uh, my IT team again will try. In between, somebody else also raised the hand. I think Prashad raised the hands. I think he is taking put it down. But maybe by mistake. Yeah. Mr. JK, you can now. Yeah. Move. Prashad, are you in a position to talk? Can you unmute? Yeah, Mr. Yes. Prashad. You... Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, please. Ah, I have two questions. One question is with regard to conversion. In case of conversion of private limited into LLP, earlier form 14 was required to be filed. Now, I do not find any such form. Is it mandatory to file form 14 LLP? Yes, form? yes, yes, yes. It is mandatory. Okay, but I could not locate that form on the portal. Uh, it is available Three. under rule 32 and 33. Yes. It is available under the rules. You click on form 14 there, it will uh, guide you there. This is a physical form. Not an e-form, this is a physical form which you will have to fill in and then take it to the respective uh, registrar. Okay, okay. What about uh, conversion took place before a year and we lapse to file the same? Okay, this uh, you will have to talk to the concerned oh. registrar how you have to take it Okay, forward. okay. We Whether need to get it sorted. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And the second question is with reference to FDI. <clears throat> See, in case of FDI, Chartered accountant can sign the valuation certificate under DCF method, right? Correct. DCF for uh, valuation of shares of private limited company is not permitted to chartered accountant, but he can sign for the DCF of valuation of LLP. Correct. There is no restriction there. 
ओके 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 थैंक्स थैंक्स फॉर द क्लेरिफिकेशन या द अदर ये बोला जी ऐसा रहता है या बोला जी कैन यू अनम्यूट ऑन कॉल सर इस तरह यानी अदर टाइम ऑफ कन्वर्शन इस तरह यानी ड्यू डिलीजेंस इस रखे अरे ड्यू डिलीजेंस सी मैंडेटरली देर इज नो ड्यू डिलीजेंस इस एक्चुअली कॉल बाय द रेगुलेटर्स ओके बिकॉज़ ड्यू डिलीजेंस सिर्फ तो ऑल यू वांट टू डू इट इस फॉर योर परपसेस बिफोर मर्जिंग एक्सेट्रा � Be, uh, why I am asking these questions? Suppose the existing partner is, he said, okay, you can go for the LLB, but I won't be the part of the in uh, in LLB. In that case, if a new partner is joined, so if he wants in that case to get it done, the uh, diligence. So no, it is I... the prerogative of the LLP, and it is the LLP's call. If at all they want to do the due diligence before uh, going for conversion, they can, they are free to do it. Okay. It's it an option. The thing is, it is not mandated by law. Okay. Okay. Thank you, madam. Thank you. I think no. There is uh, there is no more question. There is. I think. Uh, I think Jaswatiya says I am uh, unable to unmute. Ah. Uh, I don't can know. Can you now mute? Uh, unmute and do that uh, so that. We will attend and we will close. Yeah. Jaspatia, are you able to unmute? Or no? You should be. Because others were able to speak. I don't know. Yeah. Sir, Jaspatia has left the meeting. Probably they are joining again. Okay. But I don't know. We joining again on <laughs> left is okay. Joining, I do not know. That is your ah, forecast. Left is okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think in that case we can close it. Yeah, I think so because all the questions have been already answered. All the people who raised the hand also they are answered. Yeah. You can actually say your last word. Before that, I would like to express my great appreciation to Shalini. One thing is there, Shalini was actually not well. In spite of that, she has done her best and put the things very nicely, putting down all the requirements and explaining it very nicely and deliberated topic very well. Great job you have done, uh, Shalini. Thank you, sir. Thank you and so again, much. And again, we had the benefit of uh, Renuka, who actually shared from the practical experience, etc., and other things, and all this thing. Rajeshri Bhavnik has raised the hand. Okay, we can take, we can allow her. Yeah, IT yeah. department allow her. Yeah. Rajeshri, you can uh, speak. Sir, uh, sir, am I audible? Yeah, very yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, I, I have to request to you, uh, sir, from the next time, please make the slides a bit slower. Uh, otherwise, okay. it is otherwise it is cutting down okay okay got the point we'll take care and ma'am and ma'am i am a fan of yours yeah fine fine we'll take care and uh, good point this will be noted here after surely thanks a lot for the suggestion thank you ma'am thank you passing on the mic to dipti yeah thanks uh renuka first of all thanks a lot for your time, adding practical uh, experience, giving expert comment. Thanks a lot for your time. Uh, uh, and Salini, wonderful presentation. And also you answered the questions very well. Thanks a lot. So we thank all our panelists for joining us, our knowledge sharing journey on behalf of entire team of Meta Meta. All the participants, thanks a lot and please join for next series on next Saturday. Thanks. The same, One, not yeah. next series, next episode of the same series. Yokesh Gupta has actually put one question to you, Dipti. Oh, my. I know, is it out of topic? Then why we are thinking? I exam saying that. Uh, yeah. I know it is out of topic. SBO rules applicable to LLB in case of all individual partner. 
सर मैम नेक्स्ट वी आर हैविंग अ सेशन ऑन एसपीओ ऑफ एलएलपीस एज वेल प्रोबेबली लास्ट वीक इट शुड हैव बीन डन ओके फाइन और इट इज एन अपकमिंग सेशन वी हैव टू ऑन द मास्टर क्लास सीरीज या मास्टर ओके मिस्टर योगेश थैंक्स just to yes. answer to that it will be more uh, applicable to the uh, llp rather than to the individual partners correct yeah you are right actually that's right okay thank you ms renika thank you shalini wonderful presentation you are able to answer the questions almost everything thank, thank you Bal mr bala as usual you are always all rounder thanks a lot thanks everyone Yeah. Have a happy weekend. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot to everybody. Let us meet Bye. in the next session. Take care. Good weekend. Okay. Bye, everyone. Okay. Yeah.